Hi friends, hello, hi, how are you? I hope you guys are having an amazing day today. Hello, hi. Uh, candle of the day is called Laundry Day uh, and it kind of feels like one of those days where, you know those days where you have like a lot of laundry to do? <laughs> You have like so much and you're just dreading it. Uh, that's how I feel about this video. There is just truly so much to talk about and cover in this video. I have 14 pages of notes, so I'm gonna spare you guys the intro and we're gonna jump right in. I'd like to preface this entire video by saying that if you haven't already watched my sort of prequel to this video, I believe it's called We Need to Talk About the Behavior of Gabby Hanna, I would go ahead and give it a watch before this one. <laughs> Not even to like promo myself, but I just do feel like that video gives a really good preface to everything we're going to talk about because it talks about basically everything that happened leading up to this Gabby Hanna series that we are about to start dissecting in this video. I know that Gabby is not done with this series yet. Um, however, I don't know if she's actually going to keep posting videos. She probably will. She's probably reworking them at the moment. But for me personally, I feel like I need to either break this up into two parts or like this is just what I'm covering because honestly after Jesse's video I'm kind of just done <laughs> with these videos like I I do want to be fair and I want to give her the chance to talk about things but after especially all of these episodes I feel like she presents things in a very skewed way and I also feel like if there is more that's going to be another like hour-long video so we're just going to talk about what has happened so far and then go from there. So Gabby's series started with episode zero, which I believe was like story time, confessions of a washed up YouTuber. This video was kind of just like her preface for everything, which I feel like was good in the sense that if you were one of her fans, I feel like it was good to hear from her perspective, like what was happening in her life. She addressed a few different things. She talked about how she is now being treated for her ADHD, which she brings up ADHD and her ADHD specifically a ton in this series. It's kind of like a crux of the series is just the fact that she is ADHD and it impacts everything that she does, which, you know, is how that works. However, I do feel that she uses it as an excuse for a lot of things. But she did say that she was treating her ADHD now, which she wasn't when she was filming the series, which is why I think she seems visibly a lot calmer in a lot of her newer videos, because there's kind of a drastic personality shift between the videos from the series and the videos that she's been putting out recently. And I think that's why. She talked about how her and her boyfriend Peyton broke up and that they basically broke up because of all of the online drama. I guess it was causing like, personal problems. He felt like his privacy was being breached. She also talked about how she decided not to go with her music label and how she would be independently releasing a rock album. More importantly though, besides this sort of life update, she basically admitted to the theory that I had in my original video about this, talking about her behavior leading up to this series, which was that everything she was doing online and the way she was calling people out and the way that she was acting on TikTok or Instagram and all of those things, how that was very um, calculated. She was doing that because she wanted to and she wanted that negative attention and her reasoning behind it was like, well, there's always drama around me every couple of months. So like, I just wanted to be in control of the narrative. And right here is where I personally should have known that this series was going to be about her taking zero accountability for anything um because that right there says it all she genuinely feels like every couple of months people just choose to pick on her and like that's that on that and that she has no real hand in that so like she wanted to be in control this time i think what's crazy to me about that is like gabby could have controlled that narrative in the sense that if she just stopped doing all of this very problematic and hurtful behavior, nobody would have talked about her. Like if she had taken accountability for things, it's, we're going to get into all of this, but I just want to say right off the bat, like this should have been the preface for everyone involved that like this series was just going to be her taking zero accountability because even in the beginning, she basically tries to spin her behavior 
behavior and the hurt she caused other people for about two months, she tries to spin that as her trying to take control of a narrative. I'm all for her wanting to like take control of her own life and everything like that. But if your version of taking control of things is sending your fans to harass and terrorize other creators, I think you're doing it wrong. She also says after that, that while she found it fun to terrorize other creators, which is what she was doing. Um, she just found it unfulfilling. So that's why she stopped. There's also this really interesting part of her first episode where she like says that she's okay with people hating her as long as they hate her and not the version people have created. And she lists all of these like sort of negative attributes about herself. Like she's like, I can be kind of scary. I can be a bitch. I can be you know, mean, I can be, you know, emotional, I can be react to things poorly. She literally lists all the reasons that people don't like her and have like valid reason not to like her. Like those are all <laughs> checking all the boxes of why people have a problem with her. Like that is the narrative, quote unquote, that people have spun about you and said things about you. Like that's, that is the core basis of why people have had issues with you and talked about you. I know even just from my perspective, like on my channel, I can't speak for other channels, but like having covered Gabby multiple times, all of the things that she listed as like the real her are things that I just take issue with with her. She ended the video by essentially saying that everybody got to tell their side of the story. So this is gonna be her telling her side of the story before she left YouTube, which I honestly, when she said that, I was like behind that. Like I was like, okay, yeah, like I can understand that you wanna tell your side of the story. I didn't realize, I guess, in her telling her side of the story, it wasn't so much going to be telling her side of the story and was more so going to be bringing down everybody that has wronged her in the process. So chapter one was her rice gum video. I think it was smart of her to start everything off with sort of the rice gum stuff. But also in this episode, she addressed her joke stealing scandal. What happened with that was basically she, and she admitted to this, that she like accidentally stole, accidentally stole, jokes and basically said that like it was an accident she didn't know that she was doing it but like it happened she compared her joke stealing scandal to uh megan markle and pierce morgan uh basically trying to say that megan markle went on a date with pierce morgan and then he had this whole hate campaign against her and like that's why he didn't like her he had like ulterior motives basically which did happen gabby tries to also spin this about her too and basically says that for that joke stealing scandal she reached out to the guy who made the initial video about that whole situation and basically asked him like why he targeted her which to me maybe i'm like missing context but i just feel like that's a really weird thing to do to like reach out to the guy because and like why did you target me he made the video because you did it like i don't know that whole thing was weird to me like you you did whether you meant to or not you plagiarized the jokes so like it was weird to me that that was her approach to it was to be like well why me it's like because you did something wrong i don't know but she basically said that the guy who made the video was actually from her hometown and was friends with a guy that had a crush on her in like elementary school and that he told him to make the video to try to like ruin her career which i mean it could be true but I, again i think it's just such a strange way to paint that whole situation, to turn it around, to make it look like it was some person who had an ulterior motive against you and like a vendetta. Because at the end of the day, you still did the thing. Like if it was a completely baseless lie and she had never stolen a joke or she had never done that, I think that would be a different story. Like if they were trying to maliciously say something about her, that's a little bit different. But when they're calling out behavior that you did, I don't know, like I just don't see how it's relevant what the intention was, especially because it's not like when that happened, everybody was like, oh, that's kind of stupid, you're full of it. People were mad at her about this. Like people were mad that she took jokes from a comedian and tried to pass it off as her own. When presented with the evidence of what she had done, people agreed that it was not a great thing to do. It's just not only to take ownership or accountability for even like your very first scandal that you already admitted to is just strange to me. She then talked about the rice gum thing and like, like I said, I think it was smart to start with this. Like, I think she knew that that was like the way to go because honestly, and I've talked about this a bunch, I think the rice gum situation is a situation where she was completely wronged. I think that what happened to her was not okay. At the end of the day, rice gum sucks. And I don't think anybody would disagree with that. Like, 
Rice gum sucks and he sucks for smashing her phone and he never should have done it and the internet as a whole should have never taken the side of somebody who assaulted someone else. Like that should have never happened. So yeah, I think this was a good video to start this whole series off on. And honestly, this is the video that got the most positive feedback. Most of the comments, especially in the beginning, were very positive for Gabby. People I saw on Twitter were starting to defend Gabby again. She was in the right in this situation. And I'm glad people are seeing that because I do think this was a situation where she was legitimately wrong. Now, this all starts to deteriorate when we get into chapter two. I'm not gonna get too much into this one. And I, ha I have a lot of thoughts. Like I have a lot of thoughts about this whole situation. I think what it comes down to with this is like my thoughts don't matter. What matters is respecting the wishes of a person who suffered a huge tragedy. She talks about the situation with Bianca Devins and the role that tea and drama channels played in that. And I think what it boils down to for me is like the the person that actually is the victim in this situation is Bianca and her family. It's not Gabby. It's not T channels. This whole online feuding has distracted from the actual real life tragedy that happened to this very young girl and her family. And I just think that everybody involved plays a part in that. After Gabby put out this video, there was obviously a lot of backlash, which is honestly the biggest reason why I was so mad at Gabby about this situation is because, and I tweeted about this and then I deleted it because I was like, I tweeted it being like, I was just pissed. I tweeted it when I was pissed. And I deleted it because I realized like, again, I don't necessarily think my opinion on the subject mattered. And I felt like I was fueling this online drama that is not drama, it involves the of a teenager. But I do feel like Gabby knew by putting out this video, the absolute shitstorm that it would cause. And I feel like she did not adequately prepare Bianca's family for that shitstorm. I feel like she knew the chaos this would cause. And based on what the Devons family has said, they don't want that chaos. They don't want this circus around everything. That's what Gabby kept saying. They don't want the chaos. They don't want the circus. So my question would be like, why would you post that video in the first place? That video, to me at least, doesn't seem like you wanted justice for the family or justice for the mother. It seemed like you wanted justice for yourself. That's the only reason I can rationalize causing this shitstorm around this situation again. This family is not going to get justice based on the biggest demand that you were asking for, which is that all these T channels publicly apologize and address everything publicly. It seems just so counterproductive and like the opposite of what the family said that they wanted. And I think that's why I was so confused. And I'm not gonna lie, like I already said this, but like, I think it's really important to know everybody in this situation messed up. Everybody could have handled it better. Every, like everybody did. There's no like right or wrong person in this situation. Gabby should not keep bringing this up, especially in a series that's about like vindicating yourself. Like that's literally what the whole point of the series was per her is like a vindication and telling her side of the story. So bringing all of this up, I find to be self-serving. Also, frankly, I do find the drama channels and tea channels that were involved, I do find it frustrating that when the mother posted a video in 2020 that was asking for apologies or asking for them to stop talking about it, I do feel bad that that was ignored. So while I find Gabby's video on this whole topic to be very self-serving and I feel like she created this whole new circus just for the sake of like vindicating herself, I also deeply empathize with the family and how they, if they want apologies, like they deserve to get them. It's a really complicated situation and frankly, it never should have gotten to this level in the first place, but I don't think solely drama channels or solely Gabby are to blame for that. I think in all in all, it's just a really messed up situation and I hope going forward, it's a mistake that creators and the drama community as a whole don't continue to make. At the end of the day, the only opinion that matters is Bianca's mother. If she's asking for all of this to go away and for her petition and scholarship fund to be shared, then that's all that matters. I already donated $500 to her scholarship fund and I also signed the petition and I will be linking them down below in my social justice spotlight for the rest of the month just to showcase that because I do think that number one, the law that they're trying to pass is incredibly important. And number two, I think that if anything positive can come out of all of this, that would be great. Now, moving on to chapter three, this is where Gabby addressed sort of her problematic past. She talked about a lot of the problematic and frankly racist content that she made 
made a few years ago and also discussed sort of why it was problematic. She showed the videos and showed kind of where she went wrong. And honestly, again, I, I can't really provide much insight into this episode just because it's not my apology to accept. I really think especially when it comes to chapter three, uh, it's important to listen to Black and BIPOC creators who are talking about this and talking about their reaction to this. And if they think it's good enough, it's not really my place as a white woman to accept this apology, mostly because the majority of the content was racist. I'm gonna link some creators down below who I thought did a really good job sort of breaking down everything. Um, and you should go check them out because I think they can provide a lot more insight to this episode than I can. The main point to take away from that, and I do think Gabby said this, was basically just that people are calling you out for being racially insensitive. It is your job as a person who is hurting marginalized communities to listen and to learn from that. And I was glad that she included that message. Basically, the first three chapters and all of this it was a lot, but chapter four, which is called Escape the Nightmare, where she talks about her experience on the YouTube Red show Escape the Night, is where I started to get genuinely just like frustrated. <laughs> like I, again, I tried to go into this series really to like hear her side and hear her out about everything. But this chapter in particular up until this point was like the most frustrating. So not only does she talk about sort of drama with Escape the Night, she talks about a couple of things before she gets to that. So the first thing she addresses is the Kenza cosmetic scandal. She basically says in this section of the video that drama and T channels were sort of just like out to get her and that's why it became such a big deal when other YouTubers had done the sponsorship but like she was the one that got called out for it which that part I kind of agree with but I think if you're trying to say like like, well, I did the same brand deal as Tana Mojo and I got more crap for it than she did. That's like a low bar. Like Tana Mojo is literally a scam artist. Like she's she's literally a scammer. So if you're saying like, like we call Tana out for being a scammer all the time. So like you were in the same level and category as her. I think that the Kenza Cosmetics thing is so interesting because I really feel like Gabby um, doesn't get it like at all. It's so weird to hear her talk about it because even now all these years later after all of this time that she has had to like reflect on her career and reflect on everything she still does not get the root of the problem with the Kenza cosmetic situation. She says that she should have been given a chance to share her side um, of the story. She said that the way that she found out about this whole thing was because a drama channel covered it. So she would have liked to been given the chance to handle it privately, which I, I just thought was interesting because it's like, okay, if you wanted to handle it privately, how would you have known about it? Because her fans were calling her out. But if the first time she heard about it was through a drama channel, then that means that her fans calling her out wasn't being heard. She wasn't listening to them or she wasn't seeing those comments. But again, what leads me to believe that she doesn't truly get what the problem was, was that she was given a chance to address the Kenza cosmetic situation. It wasn't privately, but she did the sponsorship and made the money publicly and promoted it to her fans publicly. She is a public figure. Part of being a public figure is that you don't always get to address things privately. You have to address them publicly. And she was given the chance to address them publicly. And instead of taking accountability and saying, yep, that was a really bad business move, I'm so sorry, she made a very, very defensive video and famously was like, manage your expectations. That is what people are mad about. I genuinely believe if Gabby during that situation had just said like, guys, it was a bad sponsorship. I messed up. I apologize to anybody for not fully looking into a company like that was my fault. I don't think anybody would still be talking about these fucking makeup brushes. It's like she doesn't get or she doesn't like want to get the real problem that people had with that situation, which is that she was incredibly defensive and did not take accountability for doing that brand deal at the time. She even says in the video, like I made a bad business deal, like that's all it was. And it's like, yeah, Gabby, that is all it was. All you did was make a bad business deal. So why couldn't you just own up to and admit that at the time? Why would you make a video show showcasing all the products that you've said no to in order to prove a point that you're like very picky about sponsorships and then try to tell people that they should have expected the poor quality and they should have known the marketing behind it. Why not just leave it at that? This is where I started to notice like she just will not take any sort of accountability for any of her actions and it's almost exhausting to try to keep up with. After she talked about that, she talked about a situation where someone left like a mean comment on her Instagram and she reposted it to her story and then this caused like another 
scandal because I guess she de I didn't know about this one really I think I'd heard about it because she's talked about it but I didn't really know the details of this one I guess she had like a private conversation with this fan where the fan tried to be like well that's just my opinion and Gabby was basically like opinions can be mean like that was the gist of it and I will say that like this one's a little bit more difficult of a conversation only because in an ideal world if you are a mega influencer in the way that Gabby is and you have millions of fans you are not going to put an everyday person on blast for a mean comment, mostly because mobilizing your fan base against a normal person is just not a nice thing to do. As a public figure, even though I don't necessarily agree with this, you are expected to be able to take a certain amount of people saying rude shit to you and you just kind of have to deal with it. Like there's downsides to every job. That is just one of the downsides of this job. So in an ideal world, someone like Gabby or a celebrity like wouldn't do that, right? But we don't live in an ideal world. I also understand that like as a massive creator, getting a lot of hate comments, that is difficult to deal with. I understand why your instinct would be to would clap back at somebody. I've done it. Like all, all creators I know have done it. It's hard to constantly be berated with really, really, really hateful shit and like not respond and not clap back at it and not want to like reason with the person who's saying something mean like that. But this is the problem. Like yet again, instead of just admitting that it was like a really petty thing to do and that it was like an irresponsible use of her platform because even though like I genuinely agree that she was somewhat justified in doing it it's it's an abuse of your platform like you shouldn't do those things Ob like objectively speaking you should not do that to other people no matter how mean to you they are right but instead of saying that she just doubles down again that like she was right in this situation instead of trying to convince everybody that like the girl was wrong and like opinions can be instead of doing all that just say hey guys I'm sorry I should not have put that girl on blast I shouldn't have sent my fans to attack her uh, like honestly I was just not doing well wasn't the right thing to do and then you move on I think the reason I lack a little bit of sympathy for Gabby in these situations is because these are such easy things to just admit to. Like everybody has those days where you're not strong enough to deal with a comment like that and you just need to vent about it. Every creator I know has made that type of mistake and usually what they do if they're called out for it in this way is just say like yep I shouldn't have done that, shouldn't have put her on blast, that's that on that. If Gabby just like admitted to being wrong ever, 99% of the drama that she has found herself in would not exist. It is her inability to admit that she's wrong. That is the key root of all this. I could literally just summarize all of her episodes in that sentence. She refuses to be wrong. And not only does she refuse to be wrong, she constantly for some reason feels like she has to control every narrative about her. And that is proven further in this video because now we're getting into the escape the night portion of this video. Gabby talks about how she was on Joey Graceffa's show Escape the Night and talks about her complaints with the show. Her biggest complaints about being on the show, it was an unrealistic schedule because there were night shoots, she had unrealistic call times, she had a bad costume that was ill-fitting and also jewelry that broke her out and also that they were unable to meet her sort of meal requirements during shooting. She felt like they didn't ever have healthy food for her to be in compliance with like a very strict meal regimen that she was on. She says that she's bringing this up because Joey and Daniel, who were like the two people in charge of the show, talk shit about her publicly. I cannot express <laughs> how this is when I realized that Gabby cannot have anybody say anything about her because the talking shit clips that she played one was Daniel in a car where he named her by name and basically was like she was a nightmare to work with but I'm not going to speak too much on that and also at the end of the day she produced a beautiful show and like that's all that matters which is like the most professional way I can think of of saying somebody was a nightmare to work with like and Joey's clips were him saying that there was drama in season four and not naming her and the one time he did name her, he said Gabby was kind of a nightmare on set, but I think she would agree with that, which she does. She agrees with it in the video. So nothing they said was like a lie or wrong or like nothing they said was incorrect. Everything they said was true based on Gabby's own admission. Everything they said publicly was true.
true. So now we're getting up to a point in this series where people can't even truthfully talk about her in a way that is deemed negative, even though she self-admittedly displayed horrific behaviors. She talked about in the video how she apologized to Joey and Daniel after she was like killed off, escaped the night, and basically said she apologized for being a nightmare to work with and that they accepted her apology, but that they did not apologize to her for the role that they played, which based on everything I know now, they didn't play a singular role in anything. Then she said that even though she apologized to them, they still continued to like talk shit about her after the fact. Here's the thing, and I know from like firsthand experience that this is like a tough pill to swallow and like this is difficult, but people don't have to accept your apologies. Not only do people not have to accept your apologies, you don't get to dictate how people feel about your behavior. Like I can think of examples, even just being on YouTube, where I did things and I'm like, yeah, I mean, I stand by that decision, but like people are gonna feel how they're gonna feel about it. As much as it's annoying to like have it be brought up, that's just what it is. Sometimes your friends, or in this case, your coworkers, like you can apologize and they don't have to forgive you and you don't get to dictate how they talk about it or how they deal with that. Based on what Daniel and Joey have said and other cast members have said about her behavior on the Escape the Night, it sounds like it was high key, a very abusive and toxic work environment that she created. And she doesn't get to dictate how they talk about that for the rest of their careers. Also, after this video dropped, all these YouTubers came out in support of Escape the Night and basically said it was like a wonderful work experience. And the people who worked with Gabby said that she was the problem and she was the issue with the show. And I just have to say like, if every other YouTuber that's on the show has a positive experience and has a good experience for the most part, and you're the only one that has the problem, then I'm 99% sure that like you were the problem in that situation. Like it's not on the Escape the Night team to fix that because like you were the problem. Now, Joey and Daniel both came out with videos addressing this situation. Joey's was much shorter and was much more to the point. He basically said that like Gabby was super rude, didn't fill out the proper forms that she was supposed to before coming to set. And that's why there wasn't food there for her. And he said that the reason he was nice to her after she apologized, even though he didn't really forgive her, was because he was nervous about her backing out on like promoting the show. He still needed her basically. Like they were still gonna be working together for months as the show released. And so he said he was being a professional. And honestly, I respect that. Like I fully respect that. Daniel went on to elaborate in his video, basically saying that Gabby did not go to a bunch of her costume fittings, which was why her costume did not fit her properly and why there was some issues with that. He said that Gabby, again, did not fill out the forms that was required for having the food that she needed on set. And also that once he was made aware of the problem of Gabby lacking in food, he personally went to Whole Foods every day and made her three meals so she would have three meals there for her. And he said she didn't even eat them. So this issue that she's talking about, about not having food available to her was for one day. And also on top of that, they had like craft services there where they had like chicken and veggies. They had tons of healthy snacks in the trailer that she could have eaten. Like her claims of not having the proper food are just not real. He had receipts that showed that like he literally went to Whole Foods and made her salads every single day just so she had stuff to eat there. Also, one of Gabby's biggest claims was that she had like all these early call times and all of this stuff and that she was always sitting around on set just waiting instead of actually working. And literally like Daniel put it best, like that's just how sets work. I've done some stuff with that. And I will say my sister who she does a lot of extra work on like TV shows and stuff. She texted me after this video. She is, she's not super into YouTube drama. My sister was pissed at that video because being an extra and like working in the film industry, she knows exactly what it entails, which is mostly just sitting around and waiting. Like that's 90% of what you do on movie sets, set up shots. They're having to be on schedules. They're always running behind on schedules. My sister has gone to shoots where she's just sat around for 12 hours, acted for like five minutes and then left. And like, that was her whole job. Like that's just what it means to be on a production set. Gabby expected to just show up, get hair and makeup done, immediately shoot all of her scenes and then go home in like five hours. And that's just not how any production set works unless you're an Oscar winner. He also went on to explain that Gabby was refusing to work by not wanting to come at her call time, which he's correct, like that is refusing to work. And he also talked about a situation where they were doing billboard and they were shooting like the promo shots, they were shooting the thumbnails, how Gabby basically refused to come at one point because she had an appointment with her trainer 
at a gym. So she was saying she was not going to come to set because they wouldn't push her call time, which again, like if you've ever worked on a project like that, like that's just ridiculous. Big productions like that are so many moving parts. And if you have a call time, that's your call time. They can't just move it around and change every piece of the puzzle to accommodate your workout routine. He explained how it was so bad that they had to send her home early multiple times. The first time was when they literally killed her off the show early because they couldn't take the toxic environment she was creating on set. And the second time was during those photo shoots. In the promo video, one of the shots of like Gabby isn't even Gabby. It's literally a makeup artist in a robe who had to stand in for her because she was in such a bad mood and was calling production's assistants dumb C words. So they sent her home because they couldn't deal with her toxic and bad behavior. I don't know how any person could do those things and then be mad at other people for casually bring, she's lucky she didn't get an expose video like this a long time ago. Like, I don't know why she would dredge all of this up again because honestly, nobody was talking about this stuff with the escape the night. Like I'm sure a couple of videos were made at the time, but like nobody was talking about this. This wasn't, I didn't even know this existed, this drama on escape the night. Like I had no idea this was a thing until Gabby brought it up. If you act like a nightmare, people are allowed to talk about about it. And again, it just feels like because Joey and Daniel, and honestly, most of the Escape the Night creators, like Rosanna Pansino, like they're all very unproblematic creators who have had very successful careers without needing drama surrounding them at all times. And it just feels like Gabby, like whether she'll admit it or not, is like jealous of that. It feels like she wants to bring everyone down to her level and bring everyone down with her. And I just feel like that's really unfair to do, especially in this situation. Like, especially after seeing all the receipts that Daniel and Joey had and seeing how Gabby's story compared, like she was a nightmare on set. They tried to accommodate that and were successful because at least they got her to participate and do everything she was contractually obligated to do. And then she was mad because they shaded her in some podcasts. It doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> so in chapter five of this series, Gabby talks about Trisha Paytas and there wasn't a lot of um, like new information in this, in this one. Like there wasn't a ton of new stuff that she talked about that hadn't already been discussed in her episode zero, which was the uncut version of the Trisha podcast. Honestly, all I think about this whole Gabby Trisha situation, I think that they're both, and I've said this before, but I'll say it again. I think they're both very dramatic people. I think both of them are using strong hyperbole to make points to call the other one crazier than they are. And like, that's their whole thing is they're obsessed with who's the crazy one here. When in reality, I think they're both just like not great people. Like I really think that's what it comes down to. Gabby in these two videos about Trisha literally says that because Trisha used her music video as inspiration for her new music video, like they were similar. Gabby literally says that that means that Trisha wants to kill her because she wants to be her so badly that she's gonna murder her. That is not what that means. But anyway, when it comes down to the situation of if they were friends or not, honestly, I don't care. Um, they probably were kind of friends. I think Trisha probably did just forget about a lot of the interactions that they had. And I also think some of it was like, she made all these strong statements about Gabby. So she didn't want it to seem like she was lying in those statements. So she probably was lying in some cases and some cases were probably just genuinely forgetting. I think on the flip side, Gabby, I think just feels a lot deeper than Trisha. And so she felt like things were bigger than they were, which is like not her fault. But at the same time, like if someone is telling you they weren't that big, I don't understand this need to prove them wrong. But the big discrepancy I want to talk about is when Gabby talks about kind of what started this whole thing, which was Trisha's video where she talked about how Gabby spread a rumor about her that she had herpes. Gabby in this video really like hyper focuses on the technicalities. And this is another pattern I've seen of like, she just hyper focuses on technicalities and like just kind of steamrolls you with technical things. So there's been this dispute between the two of them. It was in the podcast too. And Gabby claims that she never made an Instagram story about Trisha until after Trisha made her video calling her out. And I don't remember it that way. And I actually have videos from that time, like when that drama all happened, where I say like, oh, Gabby posted these Instagram stories and then Trisha responded. Multiple people have that in their videos. So I saw 
saw Gabby's screenshots where she says like this is the timestamp of when Trisha posted her video this is the timestamp of when I posted my Instagram story you can clearly see that they're like 45 minutes apart and I posted my Instagram story after Trisha's so I was like why am I remembering this wrong like why is everyone remembering this wrong like am I misremembering this I'm not misremembering this Gabby hyper fixated on and the fact that Gabby hyper fixates on is the fact that she did not mention Trisha Paytas's name in her Instagram story until after Trisha made her video. She did not expose their text messages until after Trisha's video went live. What she leaves out of this and what I personally feel is very important to like the context of everything because Gabby claims that she never brings anything to the internet, that she never starts the drama, that she never does any of that. Gabby did start this drama. Just because she didn't put Trisha's name in her Instagram story does not mean that she was not the one one who brought it to the internet. Before that story where she exposed those texts, there was like seven minutes of footage of Gabby talking about, and I, and I, I can play it, I found it on YouTube. Is it wrong of you to say, hey, just so you know, I've heard this, don't know if it's true, but this person told me, talk to them about it, ask about it. Is that fucked up? I'm just genuinely curious. Like she literally does a poll on her Instagram being like, if you knew that somebody your friend slept with had herpes, would you tell your friend? And then she was like, I feel like I would tell my friend and all this whole thing, right? So Gabby in an inadvertent way, like yes, she did not tag Trisha Paytas saying this is about Trisha Paytas, but Gabby took what was their private DM conversation and made that public information. So even though the public didn't know that she was talking about Trisha, Trisha knew that she was talking about Trisha. If I was having a fight with Charles, my husband, and we were having an argument about something that was like that serious, that was involving like my sexual health or something like that. And he publicly tweeted a Twitter poll being like, hey followers, who do you think is right in this situation? And was trying to like, use this private interaction to like talk about it publicly, I would be livid. <laughs> Like, I would be so angry about that because that's such a weird thing to do. You can't say that you never take things to the internet when that is literally what you did. You were having a behind the scenes disagreement and you were the one that brought it to the internet. Even if you didn't say, oh, what would you do if you thought Trisha Paytas had herpes? And even though you didn't say her name, you alluded to it and Trisha knew what you were talking about and that's why she made her video. To imply that you did nothing before posting those screenshots and you did nothing to instigate that situation is frankly just dishonest. I don't know if she's trying to like purposefully lie or purposefully manipulate the situation, but honestly, like that's what it feels like because to say that you didn't bring things to the internet first is a lie. That is dishonest. You brought the topic of a private conversation to the public to try to get validation for what you did. You instigated and started that and Trisha responded to it. You guys know, like I am not normally on Trisha Paytas's side, but like, yeah, I would respond to that too. That's a very strange and also very immature thing to do. I think there's also this discussion because Gabby talks about this in the video too and I do think there's the discussion to be had if she was right in telling Jason about this rumor about Trisha. And honestly like at the time and even now low-key I still go back and forth on this. Like a part of me th wants to believe that in a perfect world, if like I was gonna do the right thing, right? I would have gone to the person directly and been like, hey, I heard this. I just wanted to make sure it was true, like whatever. Like in a perfect world, that's what would happen. But I also know that like, we don't live in a perfect world. Like I get where Gabby's coming from, where she's like, I didn't want something to happen to my friend. I, I do get it. With that being said, I think there's a very large difference between telling Jason privately and saying it in front of Jason and David Dobrik because I think that's bringing in a relevant person into the conversation. So high key, I think the biggest person to blame in this whole debacle and the person that never gets brought up is Shane fucking Dawson. Shane Dawson was the one who told Gabby in the first place that this happened and started that rumor and spread it. So Gabby, in my opinion, like, I don't know if it was the right decision or not, honestly. I don't think it was right to say in front of David. So Gabby made that decision. She made the decision to tell David and Jason about Trisha's sexual health. She made that choice, right? And Trisha's mad at her about it because objectively, that's not really the right thing you're supposed to do. That's not the way you're supposed to handle that. I understand that that's the way a lot of people would handle it, but the person that you say that about is allowed to be mad. Like Trisha's allowed to be upset with you 
and not like you because you did something to her that objectively was kind of shitty. You talked about her sexual health in a negative way and put a relationship that she was trying to have in jeopardy by spreading this rumor that is false. She's allowed to be mad at you about that. Like I, so while Gabby can like die on the hill that like it was the right decision for her to do and that like Jason was her friend and she was looking out for her friend and like I can understand that, at the end of the day, like sometimes you do things and it upsets people. And even if you think you're doing the right thing, it still upsets people. The fact that she constantly was waiting for a chance to like address this whole thing with Trisha is so strange to me because to me, it's like sometimes you piss people off and you just have to deal with the ramifications of that. People can have a negative response due to your actions. Even if your actions didn't have ill intent, like they're still allowed to have that response. Gabby wants to have her cake and eat it too. She wants to like do this very moral thing that she feels is very moral by telling her friend. She also wants the person it affects to not be mad at her and have any ill will towards her. On Escape the Night, like she wants to scream and cuss out directors and producers and have these outrageous food demands and have a, the producer of the show essentially act as her personal assistant. And then she wants to apologize and have them never bring it up again and never talk about it again. Like that's not how anything works. You don't get to dictate other people's feelings and emotions like that. She also has a part two video talking about Trisha where she basically just responds to Trisha's videos about her. I don't know why she posted this. I don't feel it added anything to the conversation. And honestly, I don't understand why she didn't watch Trisha's videos before responding to them. She this she did this with Jesse too. She like didn't watch the videos before responding. And I just don't understand that. How do you know what you're responding to if you're not gonna, whatever. I'm not sure about anything anymore. Like, I don't know, this, this was like. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna talk about Jesse Smiles and everything that happened with that. And honestly, I'm going to leave Jessie's video down below. Even though it's an hour long, I think that she does a very eloquent and wonderful job at kind of debunking everything that Gabby has said about her. And I also just think it's important to hear her side from her. So I'm going to give like the little brief recap. I still will strongly urge you guys to go check it out. She is so much more well put together and composed than I could ever be if I was going through what she is going through. And I empathize with her heavily with this situation because I cannot imagine, I can't imagine it. Um, before Gabby even started posting this series, she mentioned Jesse in a BuzzFeed article and said something along the lines of like, oh, it's it's crazy that I haven't gotten a apology from Jesse Smiles. So Jesse being threatened with this series, frankly, and also then being mentioned in this BuzzFeed article had kind of had enough. And she released about 10 minutes of a phone call that her and Gabby had, where Gabby admitted to hearing out Curtis Lepore, who is the man who Jesse uh, hearing out his side of the story and this made Jesse very emotional and it also had like Gabby demanding certain things from Jesse if she didn't want to pursue legal action like all this stuff right and so Gabby uh, made a video that she said was not part of her original series but it was basically her going to be responding to that phone call and kind of give a preface to the two parts in her series. One of the first big things that Gabby said that I just found to be very hypocritical I took a lot of issue with this video this video about Jesse because it just it just felt very very like hypocritical and also yet again like just focusing on the minute details like that is where she tries to be right is by focusing on these little tiny hyper focusing on these details so Gabby basically tries to say that Jesse brought up this phone call and released this phone call because she's predictable and she tried to say that her mentioning her in a BuzzFeed article was like not back and forth but I just feel like this is so hypocritical because Gabby's whole thing when she attacks any anyone is she's like well I never bring it to the internet and tries to say that this like came out of nowhere and that Jessie was unprovoked she just wanted to like get ahead of everything but this is coming from the same person who last year Jessie put her name in a thumbnail and very briefly mentioned her in a Q&A video and that caused Gabby to make an entire huge video talking about everything like that was the thing that set her off to defend herself she literally was incredibly upset because Daniel and Joey mentioned her off offhandedly in comments about Escape the Night. You can't have it both ways. A lot of the stuff that Gabby talks about in this video is stuff that she's already talked about at length when it comes to Jesse. Like she's accused her of being a narcissist and an abuser and all of these other things. But kind of the bigger points of this video was Gabby admitted that she heard out Curtis's side of the story. She basically said that she feels like everybody is a human being and they deserve to be heard out. Um, I'm sorry. I'm just going to pause right there for a second. You can't say that you're not a 
apologist and then quite literally be a rape apologist like right now in 2021. Like that is what a rape apologist would say. Even though I know that he raped my ex-best friend because my ex-best friend told me that, I still feel like he's a human being and he should be hurt and his story should be hurt. That is being a rape apologist. Like you are literally saying that you need to hear him out and hear his side of the story. You don't. You under no circumstances need to hear his side of the story or his defense to everything, especially because if my timeline is correct, at this point in time, he had already been convicted. Like he had already taken the plea deal that he took. He on a phone call admitted that it happened. Like the case was closed. There was no need for you, a person who was formerly friends with his victim, to hear him out. That is rape apology, just so we're all clear. She also gives her two cents on if she feels like it was rape or not, which in my opinion is none of her fucking business. I'm, I'm unsure about why she felt like it was necessary to include in there if she deemed it actually rape or not. And, and also I'm unsure of why she tried to make the specification that like, well, if they were dating, maybe it would have been different. No. And I'm not going to go into the story because it's Jesse's to tell, but Jesse explains all of this in her video of why that is just heinous, like a heinous thing to say. She had claimed that Jesse was using her trauma and emotions to manipulate people and that Jesse did know that Gabby had heard Curtis out on his side of the story, which again, honestly, like, I think it's just because I've, Gabby has just lied and misrepresented so much. I, I genuinely don't believe her that like Jesse knew about that. I don't, I don't believe her. Besides the fact that I think Gabby is in a very unreliable narrator of events, I also feel like Jesse would have brought that up in her very first video talking about Gabby. She brought up the fact that Gabby said his friends didn't rape you. Why would Jesse also not bring up the fact that you heard out her this side of the story. Like, why would she leave that out? And really what I gathered from all of this is, and again, it's Gabby getting hung up on these little details. Gabby is so obsessed with this narrative that's being pushed that she defended her best friend's which in this video, she releases the three hour phone call. I listened to the three hour phone call multiple times. We'll get into that in a second. But, but like in that phone call, she literally says to Jesse that she knows that Jesse never said that, that that's just like a narrative that was run with by the internet. But like Jesse did not start that. If you have no idea what happened, when the lawsuit dropped about Jesse's at the time they were allegations. When that dropped, there was a TMZ article that came out. A lot of Viners reacted to, and a lot of Viners were against Jesse. Abby being one of those people, she tweeted some really heinous stuff about Jesse, not believing Jesse, making jokes, making light of the accusations. And Gabby has since tried to deny that that ever happened. She denied that she ever made tweets. She's owned up to a couple of tweets, but claimed they weren't in context. She has said multiple times at this point that she never, ever, 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 she never, ever tweeted a, a, that day about the TMZ article and she never tweeted in support of Curtis, but she did. And in this phone call and in this video, she finally admits to the fact that she did. Why Gabby thinks she's not wrong for that is because she thinks that because she did that before she was friends with Jesse, that that means that the narrative being spread about her, that she defended her best friend's this is false because she feels like she didn't even know Jesse at the time. She was just a random person speculating on all of this drama. She didn't know Jesse. She didn't know Curtis. She didn't know any of these people. So what she's getting stuck on is the detail that Jesse never said, which was that it was her best friend's best at the time. Regardless of if Jesse was your friend or not, those tweets still exist. You still did that. And the problem is, is that Gabby apologized to Jesse for those tweets. And that's how they became friends was Gabby literally straight up was like, that was fucked up. I apologize for doing that. And that's how they became friends. And they moved on from that situation, which is totally fine. The problem with that, and this is something that Jesse tried to explain to Gabby and Gabby literally just dismissed her and was like, oh, we're getting off topic. It wasn't off topic. It was the truth. When you apologize for something to a person, something fucked up that you do, which that's pretty fucked up. Like that's like another level of messed up. Tweeting the things that she tweeted and like mocking her and making a joke joke of her rape. Like that's fucked up. Jesse's point was that when Gabby got on camera and tried to deny and lied that that ever happened, that apology that she gave to Jesse was taken back by her doing that. Her direct action of lying about the role that she played in the day that the TMZ article dropped was her problem. So even though, yes, on that day, of the TMZ article dropping. Technically, Gabby did not defend her best friend's She still defended a 
noticed. And that is what people are upset about. And her trying to get hung up in this little detail of whether her and Jesse were friends or not is not the fucking point. Like that's not the point of why people are mad at you. That has a, That is irrelevant to the entire conversation because at the end of the day, did you defend a Yes. My problem with Gabby is she just tries to rewrite history to fit narratives that like she created. And also, honestly, again, I feel like I'm just beating a dead horse, but I feel like it's so important to point out in this video, Gabby literally at the end of it is like, I never wanted this. I never wanted to look through all these texts with Jesse. I never wanted to expose all this stuff about her. Like, I never wanted this. I was staying in my own lane. But like, Jesse has not talked about Gabby in like a year. Gabby started this series in March, unprovoked. There was no provoking her. The last person to speak in this whole drama was Gabby. This had all been like laid to rest at this point. Gabby is the one who wanted to go on this like Taylor Swift reputation era tour where she like tore into all the people she felt wronged her. Like you did want to do this. Don't lie. You wanted to do this. If you didn't want to do this, you didn't have to because Jesse was not speaking about you. Joey Graceffa was not speaking about you. Trisha Paytas, I don't even remember how they got in beef again, but like Trisha probably was talking about her, like that's fair enough. But like Rice Gum was not speaking about you. Nobody was talking about Kenza Cos. Like this is the root of all of this. It's like Gabby is like, I didn't want to have to do this. Yes, you did. Because you started all of this and started this whole drama around yourself to promote this series unprovoked. So yes, you did want to do this. Now, like I said, Gabby dropped the three hour phone call in her video and I did listen to the whole thing and Gabby claims that Jesse like took out a bunch of context. I genuinely don't feel like there was that much context taken out. The stuff that Jesse took out was like drama that they had with a guy and like Gabby trying to make jokes about having sex with one of Jesse's ex-boyfriends and like important note, I guess she didn't do it, but she like could have, I guess was like the big point in that. But anyway, it was like petty drama like it was like petty drama between the two of them that honestly it felt very invasive listening to not even just for Jesse but like Gabby too it felt like I shouldn't have been listening to all of this drama it kind of felt like honestly it was very reminiscent of like a lot of fights that I had with like a toxic friend that I had like that's what it felt like it was just a lot of petty stuff and honestly it didn't make Gabby look good. Like that phone call, I don't know why she thought that was going to make her look good or like clear her name in any way. All it did was make her look honestly worse. And honestly, Jesse didn't even look that bad. It was so apparent in that phone call who was planning on releasing the phone call eventually. It was Gabby. Jesse did threaten Gabby. She threatened to like punch her or something. They're like at VidCon and she texted her like, don't come up to me or I'm going to like knock your teeth out or something like that, which I don't agree with that language. Jesse also didn't agree with that language. She said she shouldn't have said it. And she said she fucked up in saying it, which is like all all I can ask for of a person at this point after hearing Gabby not take accountability for seven hours straight. And also there was more talk about sort of like the legal stuff that was supposedly going to happen. The whole point of the call was them trying to come to a resolution instead of Gabby suing Jesse. That was like the entire point of the phone call. And they really did not come to a resolution apparently. And after this video and the phone call were put out, Jesse put out a video basically going point by point debunking everything in Gabby's video. And honestly, the biggest thing that I would say from Jesse's video that was like the most shocking to me was number one, how composed she was when talking about these things. I have to say too, and this is like a side note, but as somebody who's like a sexual assault survivor, the way that Gabby so flippantly talked about Jesse's trauma was very like upsetting to me. It just was like, it was upsetting to hear somebody so flippantly discussing the event of somebody having like the worst experience of their life. Like I know how triggering and traumatizing that is. And I know how like literally having a, a sexual assault or happen to you, it changes the trajectory of your entire life. Like it impacts things that you can never even fully explain to other people, the way that that violation impacts you. And the way that Gabby was so flippantly talking about Jesse's experience with that just bothered me on that phone call. And maybe that's my own bias from like my own experiences. And maybe other people aren't as sensitive as I am, but like that really bothered me. Like the fact that she would just so casually bring up the night and her and like if somebody was talking about my fist like that to me, I would lose my fucking mind. I don't know how Jesse didn't like, I don't know how she stayed as calm as she did. Cause I would have lost my mind. If somebody talked to me that way and talked about my 
fist in that way and was trying to like almost she was trying to use Curtis as an alibi at one point like anyway in Gabby's video she said that Curtis Lepore tried to blackmail her and that when they had the FaceTime call where she heard out Curtis's side of the story but after that he filmed it and tried to use clipped together pieces to prove that Gabby was like on his side the whole time the biggest thing that Jesse revealed on her video was essentially that according to Curtis who I don't trust for a second I think he's a real piece of shit but according to Curtis how that happened was it was not Curtis reaching out to Gabby to do a FaceTime call to like explain his side. It was Gabby reached out to Curtis and Gabby was asking for his side of the story and Gabby was saying that she believed him and like believed everything and that like Jesse was a liar or something like that. Like that's what Curtis said happened. And honestly, I agree with Jesse in the sense that I think they're both liars. I, I don't know who to believe in that situation. I don't know why Curtis would lie about it and I do know why Gabby would. So I find that to be something. But, but at the end of the day, I don't even know if that detail matters because at the end of the day, she sat down and listened to former best friends this side of the story. And to me, that is unforgivable. Like there's nothing you can do to forgive that. Especially when now today in 2021, you are still doubling down that, that was somehow the right decision and the right thing to do. At the end of the day, like after all of this, Gabby's inability to take accountability and to not micromanage the reactions of people around her is what has gotten her into 90% of the situations that she talked about and covered in this series. I'm actually glad Gabby's leaving YouTube, not because I think she a reprehensible person, which I do think that she is, but I think it's because she genuinely cannot handle what being a social media influencer entails. I don't think she can handle it. She cannot handle people talking negatively about her. She cannot take accountability when she fucks up and she cannot handle the massive platform that she was given. Gabby has played a massive role in every single event, but by her telling of things, that's not true. Like by her telling it, she is the victim in all of this, when in reality, in 90% of these situations, she is the reason this has happened and she has played a massive role in it. And also, just so we're clear, reporting on drama about you like Angelica Oles does is not abuse. That's not abusing you. Not accepting your apologies like Joey and Daniel did is not abuse to you. That's not toxic. That's not narcissistic. Not liking your book is not toxic and narcissistic and abusive like Rachel Oates. What is abuse and what is toxic and what is narcissistic is using your gigantic platform to make video after video after video exposing people that you feel have wronged you and sending your fans to go attack them with your skewed narrative of what happened in your version of events. Your opinions are not facts and presenting your opinions and your experiences and your perspective as facts, that is an abuse of your power. That is being abusive to those people. Holding secrets over everybody's heads and holding what really happened over, that's abuse. That's toxic and not taking accountability for any of your actions is narcissistic. Gabby is everything that she claims everyone else is. It is irresponsible what Gabby has chosen to do with her platform and I will let Jesse explain kind of my final thoughts on this. If you want to leave YouTube, there's the door. But stop trying to bring everyone into the shit that you caused.